everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to a new playthrough on the channel. Figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a break from the product unboxings I'm posting. Figuring I'm going to have at least one more this week, possibly more, to give you actually some playthrough on the ch some play some gameplay on the channel. Who knew gameplay was a thing on this channel? Anyway, we're taking a after we played Mr. President yesterday. We're going to step back into a new story that we just started as we continue our playthrough of Mag-23 Guadalcanal from Historic Wings. This game, once again, dumps you into a squadron, basically puts you in charge of a squadron in, World, in the World War II Pacific, trying to hold Guadalcanal against the Japanese. So we had a couple of orders of business we need to, we need to get to. First thing we need to do is we need to deal with the serious wound on... Francis, our squad leader, our squad leader for the SBDs, because of the serious wound he took, he's actually getting he's actually getting transferred out. So we need to make a promotion, and I think our promotion for this squad is going to be to bring Tango up as our new CO. So we're going to make him the CO, and our new XO is going to be. We're going to make Cabal the, Exo, the new EXO of that squadron, and we'll bring Joker up as, an, as our new flight leader. So actually, let me do it this way. CO. Just so it's not so hard for me to read on the... Just so it's not so hard for me to read on the squadron log. And as you can see as well, given that we're heading into August 22nd, 1942... We also get a new squadron of P-400s. These aircraft are where... Oh, table's over here, because it's being a bookmark for something else that we're going to get into. P-400s can actually are pretty good planes. Looks like they can do both bombing and strafing runs. They can bomb once and strafe twice, depending on what we're taking on. But we'll see what we're getting into for today's mission a little bit later. The other order of business we need to do is we need to address the... We need to talk about the historical story. So, as you might see in the books, I kind of, I didn't really get this far in the books when we were, when I was doing the open the book on these games, but at least for Guadalcanal, there's a little bit of history here. So going through some of, actually you can pause that and read it if you like. We'll go through some of the highlights around the 21st. They had their first, MiG-23 launched its first mission where they actually came across some zeros and had apparent, apparently a pretty rough day from the looks of it. Where the runway, you've been seeing me have a lot of episodes with the runways on the, in the playthroughs on both the takeoffs and the landings. The runways really were that historically horrendous. It's not just me getting unlucky, even though I normally have a pretty terrible relationship with Lady Luck. Unfortunately, that part is historically accurate, where the runway was just that wretched. So we'll just have to deal with that as best we can. If you remember from our first video a few days ago, we're actually facing from our from one of our overnight hits, the night infiltration actually, we're facing a pretty bad runway where we have to take a minus one roll modifier on that. So that's going to be a bit of a problem there. But I think that's everything set up over here. Now I want to move over to the board and check out our new shot. I'm just kind of checking things out on the final shot here. Everything looks pretty good. I can, I should be able to put the maps down here so that everything can stay front and center when we play through. One other thing I want to clarify before we jump into today's playthrough is I kind of, is I actually did a few things wrong in terms of VP allocation. So I did the hit allocation correctly on the ground targets yesterday, but what I didn't do is I didn't calculate the VP for each hit. So. So on our first mission, we actually picked up six VPs from hitting the supplies twice. And on the second mission, we had we had just the one hit. The Japanese should have also picked up three victory points for the two planes that were... Actually, for the three planes, I believe. One, two, three. Yes, they just... They, three airplanes were destroyed, even though most of those were via the runway. Actually, two of those were via the runway. One was by the night infiltration. So the Japanese should actually have picked up three victory points, but it didn't change anything from any, didn't change anything else where we still won on the day by picking up nine victory points versus three for the Japanese. So I think everything looks good on the shot, which means we can get into this playthrough for August 22nd, 1942.
Once again, I love that there are actually counters with this game now. So we're going to try to, we have an option now to schedule combat air patrol, but I'm not going to schedule it. I need to try to preserve my fuel as much as I can. Next, we need to determine the weather as part of that. So where's my modifier? Oh, I bet that's in the book because I'm a smart boy and it would help if I bring that back front and center. Or at least somewhere off to the side where I can actually get at everything. So now I have to roll for the weather, bearing in mind that we're also facing a minus one runway modifier. If this is, if this is terrible weather and we end up with a mission that's not conducive to it, I'm probably not going to fly today. But let's see what we get here. Weather today, six is actually clear weather, so we have pl a plus two modifier, which makes me a little bit warmer to flying. I'm just going to make a note here off camera. It also means we're, like, we're more likely to have our first dogfight action. But we need to figure that out when we determine the mission type. And we're going to be a plus two on that. Six is going to turn into an air mission. Which means I'm going to want predominantly... Which means I'm probably going to want predominantly wildcats for that one if I can spare them. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to want all wildcats if I can help it. Because most of the other craft are going to be inconsequential. Let me look at how beat up my... Oh no. My... Looks like most of my squadron is actually not doing too bad. I should also mention, by the way, before we go too much further, I'm going to be getting a lot of reinforcements as the playthrough goes on. Some of you are already represented, so I apologize for not asking for permission on that. But if you would like to be represented in a future squadron as they come through, please leave a comment in the description, in the comment section of this video, or any video coming up with a call sign that you'd like to be represented by. And I will make sure you get incorporated into a future squadron. Like I said, I'm going to be having a lot of pilots coming in. So now that that's all handled, we've got the air mission ready to go. Now we need to figure out our, our Coast Watcher and Marine Scout reports. This time we're looking at mission... Uh, what you call it? Co Coast Watcher reports. Just making my notes here once again. Uh, we got Bougainville, New Georgia, Santa Isabel. Nope. Help if I can spell right. Savo Island. And West Guadalcanal. And as a direct suggestion from the designer who actually reached out, and thank you for your feedback, Thomas, I'm actually trying to use some of your feedback here. Instead of rolling them one at a time, I'm going to roll, assuming I can get them all in the cup, I'm going to roll 5d6, and then for working from the closest to the tray backward, I'm going to take those as my reports. If I get two at approximately the same level, we're going to work from left to right on that. So let's roll up our Coast Watcher and Marine Scout reports. Okay, I think we can kind of work with that. So first for Bougainville, we've got the we've got the Australian officers there who are actually radioing in with a report at North Point and Bowen. Oop. Let's put it in the right place in your log, Phoenix. Let's see, at New Georgia, they're not telling us anything. They, they didn't give us any heads up that anything was coming. At Santa Isabel, they're not telling us much either. And the, Australia, the officers at Santa Isabel and Savo Island aren't telling us anything either. West Guadalcanal, however, we're getting a hint from the priest there that something's coming. So that's helpful-ish. Tengarare, I believe. Yep, okay. And then we don't have radar yet, because we're still too early in the mission for that. 
Now we have to roll for the type of mission that we're facing, or for the, not for the type of mission, for the first reported force that we're facing. That'll determine how much firepower I think I need to put up. And this is also modified by... Okay, this isn't modified by anything. All right, a three says we're apparently facing 93A vowels. And six A6M zeros. All right, and then we need to determine assign, we need to assign our pilots an aircraft. As I mentioned, heading up, heading up for a dogfight, I primarily want to put F4Fs, I primarily want to put Wildcats up. The question is how many do I want to put and what range do I want to put them at? So I can get the air combat ready to go. And Yep, we got a squadron of bombers and a squadron of zeros that are going with us. So I think we're going to put. The question is how many wings of how many how many elements of wildcats can I put up? I do not did not get that terminology right either. Um We're actually going to put, like I said, these are all gonna be F4F. They're all gonna be wildcats. I think we're going to put Ruff up, and I'll give him, I'll give him Sting on his wing, that wasn't intended to rhyme, but whatever. And I'm going to put Flight Leader Jester with Lieutenant Hunter on wing. We're going to put um, we're going to put Lieutenant Reptile up with Lieutenant Flash on wing, and I want to put one more wing up. We're going to put let's put Lieutenant Shadow. up with Lieutenant Hell on wing. Okay, so that's our assigned air pilots and aircraft. I believe we also need to decide here if we're going, to, which range we're going to intercept at. Uh, yes. We're going to go for a... Mm, let's go for a close range interception. which will only cost us one barrel of fuel per pilot. So that's going to be eight for plane we're putting up. So that's eight fuel. With that, I think we're just about ready to set assign takeoff an aircraft. So I'm actually going to shut the camera off for a little bit here, put the map out to take a look at the shot there, and then we'll roll up for our takeoffs. I like the way that map looks in shot with the dice tower. I'm actually very happy with that. But we've got business to see to first, so we have to roll for our takeoffs. First up is rough, and we need our 2d6. We're also on a net plus one, because we get a plus two modifier for clear weather. But remember, we have that minus one from the night infiltration hit we suffered last night. So we're facing, so we're, we've got a plus one modifier here. So let's give this a roll. That's a six, plus, plus one is seven. Ruff will get off the ground. Let me pull out an element there. So I'm going to make a note of the roll on the margin. Let's see if Sting's able to join him. That's a... That five is a little hard to see. But that's a nine plus one is ten. Sting will get off the ground which means that will flip over, and then we'll also grab out a marker for having the XO in that element, if I can find it in my cup here. Ah, here we go. So the XO there. 
All right, next up for Jester's takeoff. That's a seven plus one is eight. Jester also gets off the ground nice and clean. Let's see if Hunter joins him. Four plus one is five. Hunter does not join Jester off the ground. Hunter is going to have a crash with no damage. Honestly, I could probably roll all of this in one shot if I'm willing to dedicate a set of dice to... If I'm willing to dedicate a couple sets of dice to this game, but we need to roll for Hunter's injury. We want a four to six here. That's a two, so that's going to be a light wound. Out for six days. Delightful. Help if I pay attention and make notes on the... Squadron log as well, so Ruff's going up on air. Sting. Jester. Hunter, who's now light wounded. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we got that. Reptile is up on air. Flash is also air. Shadow on air. And Hell also on an air mission. Okay. Now that we've got that sorted out, we can come back to rolling for our takeoffs. Next up, speaking of Reptile, let's see if he gets off the ground. Eight plus one is nine Reptiles off the ground. And Flash. Five plus, six plus one is seven. He's off the ground. So we need another element of Wildcats which will have a flight leader in it with Jester. If I can find another flight... There we go. I was going to say, if I can find another flight leader chit in there, which will be... This will probably be turning into a new wing. I haven't decided what the wing is going to look like yet. Let's see if Shadow and Hell get off the ground first. Shadow's up. Five plus one is six. He will not get off the ground. But there won't be any damage to the cr to the craft. Crash. No damage. And we want to see a tour up here. No injury. That's a six. Okay. And Hell. Let's see if Hell gets off the ground. Eight plus one is nine. Hell gets off the ground. So we need another element of Wildcats in here while I figure out... Okay, so we've got to set up our new elements. We've got three elements that we can form. Actually, we've got Ruff with... Ruff and Sting are going as planned. Sting's going to be on his wing. Uh, Jester's going to pick up... Jester's going to pick up Hell on his wing. And Reptile and Flash are going together. Okay, now that we've got that figured out, we need to see about sighting the final Japanese force. That's going to be a, D, a 2d6 roll. We're modifying by plus 2 because we got two intel reports from the Australian officers and the priest at... Bougainville and West Guadalcanal, respectively. So this roll is plus two. Nine plus two is 11. It's barely inaccurate. Let's see what we're facing instead. That's going to be another roll on the mission table for the air. Modifying by... Actually, not modifying here. So it's single D6. It says we're facing six... Is six A6M zeros. With one ace. Alright, I will get that all set up. So we need two elements of zeros. Or, yeah, two elements of zeros. And then we'll determine which one has the ace in it. If I can find... Should be an ace chit in here. 
strafe. You're not a triple ace, that's for sure. Ah, ace, here we go. All right, odds evens that for the one that'll have the ace. Oh, wait, is it? The, so based on that, it would be the odds having the ace, but I think the way it actually works is it's actually three, if I'm understanding this correctly, now that I think about it, it might actually be, and Thomas will probably correct me in the comments about this, which I don't mind, it'll be an element of three and an element of two, but then there'll be a different, but then there'll be a separate A6M0 as an ace. That would make the most sense. But knowing me, I'm probably doing all of that wrong. So we've got a dogfight with the six A6M0s coming up. Which means we'll be getting ready for our air mission here. And I've got another marker up here. We're doing a close range interception. So I believe the way that works is... Is it from top to bottom or left to right in the task box? I think... Combat resolution. Use one of the rows. We've got that. Strict order by step. So AAA, then dogfights, then bombing, then strafing. Okay, so it looks like we roll the. It looks like we roll everything at the essentially at the at essentially simultaneously. Admittedly, I've never had an air mission come up on video yet, so it looks like we're just having a dogfight there, which I believe is what that is, right? Uh, no, it looks like we just have the. So it looks like we've got any fighter patrols or any fighters that we sent up and our combat air patrol, but we didn't send a combat air patrol up. So from the looks of it, the Japanese fighters don't get to attack at all in this first box. So we get, so it looks like we get a free shot at the fighters if I'm understanding that correctly. So first dogfight, we're going to assign the how do we want to split this up? I'm going to send the element with rough in it against... Actually, do I even want to try to pilfer? Do I want to even try to... I probably should try to pick off the ace if I can. So I'm going to send the exo against the ace. Then I'm going to put the flight leader... Actually, I'll put the flight leader... We'll put jester and... Who's that? Jester and Hell against that element. And we'll send the... And we'll send Reptile and Flash against them as well. So now we're going to roll for the... So now we're going to roll for our first dogfight. So we've got... So first dogfight, we've got... Rough and... That was Rough and Sting, I believe. Actually, I don't think we can even attack the ace until we get through everything else, now that I think about it. I believe we would lose the ace last. I think. Don't quote me on that, though. Um, that's a pretty simple dogfight. I I th I'm pretty sure we shoot down aces last, so I don't think we can even send... So I think what we do instead is we put the rough, I think we put rough and sting against the three six ACM zeros. Okay, so now we're rolling 1d6 for the element, plus I think another one since we have the, plus another one since we have the XO in there. I believe. Uh, dude, still not telling me that because that would make too much sense. Probably in the section about combat operations. Um, dogfight resolution. Plus one D6 for the flight leader. 
but that's not telling me if the I believe the XO gets gets a plus one as well. I believe you get you give a plus one bonus for the XO. So I'm gonna roll two d six against the trio of zeros, and we need to see at least a five and up to hit. And the zeros don't defend. That's a five and a one, so we do score one hit. But now we need to roll for who gets the hit. On a one to four, Ruff gets it being on wing. Five to six, Sting gets it. Two will give that hit to Ruff, which will also give us three VP. Okay, so that flips over to a two. Then we're rolling for Jeff, then we're sending. Then we've got Jester and Hell. Plus, that's Reptile and Flash. Against the two six ACMs, six, against the two A6M zeros. All right, so we get one d six for the so we get two d six for the two elements plus another one because we have a flight leader in there. So that's three d six against those two a six m's. That's a three four and a six, which gives us another hit. I believe yes. We also defend. We would also defend one of those, but. The bomb, but the fighters aren't attacking yet. So now we need to determine which element we're giving it to. One, two, three, it'll go to Jester's element. Four, five, six will go to Reptile's element. A two will be going to Jester's element. And a one to four, Jester gets it since he's our main pilot. The four, so Jester gets the hit. Which means it's now got one. It's now got one craft in it. So now we need to. Now we move to the next part of the next box of the close range interception. Now that we've taken out two zeros, unfortunately, I don't think I have a single in here. I don't have, think I have single non A A six M's in here. Uh, no. So now we're so we're dogfighting once again. Which means now I think combat is all simultaneous. So we have to roll four. So we're going to roll three, I believe, plus one D6 for the Japanese. Um, so to have four D6 for the Japanese. We'll use red, we'll use these red and black dice for those. Um, then we roll five blue D6 for the Americans. Three. Four, five. We have two elements. Uh, we have three elements actually, plus our flight leader and our XO. So this will be our second dogfight. Okay, so we're rolling everyone versus the A6M zeros. We have. We're down to four now. But we still have the same number. Okay, so J Japanese roll, and then U.S. roll. We'll just roll everything at the same time, which will be a lot of dice, but no help for that. The Japanese need at least a four to hit. We want fives. But we just want some threes as well so we can defend. Wow. Okay. So the Japanese pick up. So the Japanese roll a two, roll two, three, five, and six, which will translate to two hits. Whereas we roll one, four, and three sixes. So for us, that will translate to one defend and three hits. 
So we're going to cancel. So that'll get to cancel out one of the hits, essentially, from... So that'll cancel out one hit from the zeros, which means we have to roll for which element is going to lose a plane. Actually, I think we roll for who gets credit for the hits first. I'm probably doing this dogfight completely wrong. We will have three hits to give, give credit for, but... All right, we'll get those dice out of the way. All right, so first we need to determine the hit that we're going to be taking, because somebody is going to be getting shot down. So one, two, three, four, five, six will be three, so it'll be somebody in Reptile's Flash, in Reptile's Flash, Reptile's Element. A two, which means Reptile gets shot down since he was on wing. We'll have to roll for his fate. All right, Reptile. We've got a roll here for a bailout. Since we're in a dogfight, we want a four and lower. That's a four, so he will bail out. That's fortunate. So now we need to roll for our three hits. Which means we need to, so we're going to be taking these, so we're going to be taking one of these elements out and reducing the other one. So we've got three hits. We'll roll, I think we'll use the two, the 2d6. So we'll use the blue one for credit, or for the element, and then the red die for credit. So we've got three hits to roll for. The element die is going to go one, two, th actually we're going to flip that over. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the black die is based on the one to four, the main pilot gets it, five to six, the wingman gets it. So first hit is going to, unfortunately, Reptile's taking a hit with him. Reptile gets a hit. And then for our next hit, Three is, oh great, that's Reptile again. That's not good. And our last hit, we need to find, we're gonna need to find him pronto, probably by running search and rescue. Three, this time Flash gets one. We are definitely gonna need to run search and rescue on that. All right, so that's going to be a total of one victory point. Wait, is that one victory point or That doesn't make... Hold on. Okay, so yeah, we get... So we get three vic... Actually, we're going to be picking up five victory points from this dogfight. Versus one for the Japanese. From this... From this dog... From this dogfight so far, but we haven't rolled for interception yet. So we're taking that element out, and this one's down to one plane. So now with that all done... Third dogfight, and this time we're bringing the... This time we have Henderson Field rolling as well. So we have... So we still have our three elements, which means we get our 5d6 once again. This time they have only 3d6. I believe... What did we say? Oh, I need to take a small break. I know that seemed like an oddly placed break, but after yesterday's mishap of losing some footage during the video... For Mr. President, I didn't want to repeat that again. In fact, let me make sure I start the timer again. I'm keeping so that's what I'm doing is I'm keeping a an external timer on my watch. That way, when it goes off, I can actually remember to take a small break so I don't turn off so I don't lose my footage. So here, what did we say? We work from the rows. Okay, so we don't have any bombers in this run, which means the Japanese are going to be. Do they strafe? Uh, we don't have any bombers to worry about, so I think the Japanese do strafe. We're not dogfighting in this one. So the Japanese will be strafing, and they need a... They once again need a... They need a three on strafing. So the zero's rolling on strafing. We have 3d6 there. 
But we'll be dogfighting with the Japanese once again. So 3d6 on strafing. They want threes here. We want to see these rolls be nice and low. Or be nice and... Yeah, nice and low. Six, three, two. So they pick up, so they score two hits. So scoring two hits on Henderson Field. And our first hit. Four is another runway hit. Great. So we're minus one again when we head into August 23rd in 1942. Delightful. And the other hit. Three is... We have another aircraft destroyed. Are you kidding me? Now that we have three types of craft, we've got another Wildcat. We've got Wildcat, SBD, and a P-400. So one, two will flatten a Wildcat. Three, four will lose a Dauntless. And five, six will lose a P-400. Five, we lose a P-400. So that's going to be another... That's going to be another... Two victory points, I think, for... That's another two victory points for the Japanese. So they're up to, they're up to three so far on this, on the day. So that's their strafing run. Now we need to roll and hopefully take more of these guys out. So we've got our 5d6, actually we do 5d6 first. That's a lot of hits. That's going to be four and four hits. So everybody gets flattened and we pick up another, we pick up another four VP. Which will bring us up to nine VP on the day so far. So now we need to, um, actually we had, I believe we had two zeros left. So we're only going to credit for two hits, but we get but we get the AVP for all of them. So once again, we're going to roll blue for element and black for, and red and black for credit. So one, two, three, four, five, six on blue, and then same as before. This time it will be element five, so Jester's element, which means Jester will pick up one of our hits, and the other one. One will be going to rough. Actually, no, that, the first one is going to, well, one is going to rough, the other is going to jester. Either way. All right, so that's, that's actually everything shot down for the Japanese, which means, so that's all done. Everything's been destroyed, so now we need to see about landings, and I'm going to shut the camera off so I can prepare the logbook for the landings. Now we're rolling for landings. So the runway now is a straight is going to be a straight roll. We don't have the plus one modifier to work with anymore. Rough up first. Eight. He'll get on the ground. Now for Sting. Let's see if his wingman gets down with him as well. Five. He will not. Well, crash. No damage to the craft. And we have to roll for an injury. We want to see a four and up. That's no injury. Good. All right, Jester up next for a landing. That's a six. He won't get on the ground, so he'll crash with no damage. And we need to roll for an injury as well for him. Five, he's fine. He'll walk that one off. Now for Hell, five, he'll also crash with no damage. 
And let's see if he takes a wound. We want a four and up on this one. So he takes a light wound naturally. And he's out for one day. That could have been worse. All right, so Hell, I'm gonna grab the squadron log so I don't forget. He's on a light wound, he's out for one day. And Flash, Snake Eyes, uh-oh. That's bad. So we lose another aircraft, which will bring the Japanese up to four victory points on the day for the destroyed craft. And now we need to roll for his fate. On a one to two, he's killed. Three serious wound, four to six light wound. That's a six, so he'll take a... He'll somehow have his plane flip on him, explode into a ball of fire, and then he'll walk away from that. I imagine he'll be out for quite a bit of time from that. Six days. I am not even remotely surprised about that. And given that the outcome could have been a lot worse and... Actually, on my off-the-channel playthrough was for my original CO. Yeah, I will take that every day of the week. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Landings are done. Let's see if we have an additional mission. I hope not. I would not mind some time to recover from this one, but we need a roll of a three and up. So, of course, we have another mission that we're flying. Joy. We have new weather. So we're treating this basically like it's a whole new mission. Alright, so we've got... So we're not sending a combat air patrol up again. Let's see what the weather is this time. I did screw this up last time as well. Where we do roll for the weather since it changes quickly in the Pacific. This time we're... Well, we have clear weather again. So we've got another plus two. So the runway will be a straight roll once again. That's until the end of the next game day. Great. Actually, Thomas, you'll probably weigh in with this in the comments down below. But I, the way that's worded, I would assume that goes that the minus one to runway that we took on the strafing action, that would probably go away at the end of the next game day, correct? Because that's the, the way that's worded is the way I would take that. But it's possible that it might end with the end of today's mission. But, let's see. So we had clear weather we established. Which means now we need to determine our mission type. This is where I'm kind of ruminating the good weather. Because I would not mind getting a mission where we can kind of take it easy. So let's see a low roll. A 2 plus 2 is 4, which just barely... Takes us into another air mission. Great. Uh, looking at our Wildcats, we put quite a few of them up today. So, so we've got another air mission coming. Then we need to determine our Coast Watcher and Marine Scout reports. I'm going to make my notes off camera again. Ogainville, New Georgia. It's hard to do some of this prep work ahead of time just because you don't know what you're going to... Because a lot of times you're at the mercy of the dice. Santa Isabel. Savo Island. And West Guadalcanal. We'll do the same thing we did before. We'll take our 5d6. I'll actually get this out of the way. Because I know at most we're putting up another one flight leader. We grab our 5d6. Roll this just like we did before. It's a good thing I left the air map right here. All right, once again, working from the bottom and going up. Bougainville and New Georgia are reporting all's quiet. At Santa Isabel, they're giving us a heads up about Toonie Bully. 
They're giving us a, he a heads up that something's coming. Sabo Island is also telling us about the about the mountain above Panuela. Actually, that's Penwelly. Help if I could read. And West Guadalcanal, the Dutch priest there is giving us a heads up there as well. And good eye. Okay. And of course, we don't have radar there, but we need to determine what Japanese force they think we're facing. So our reports are telling us that they think we're facing. Three, they think we've got nine, they think we've got bombers and, they think we've got bombers and zeros headed for us. Nine D three A Val and nine six A six M nine A six M zeros. All right, so now who do we want to put up? So pilots and aircraft. So we're looking at a straight roll on the runway. Um, I think we're going to put Fong up for sure. These are all going to be F4F elements. Because the rest of them are not going to be good at all in ground combat. Or in air combat. So we're putting Fong with... Or we're going to put Fong with Inferno up. We're going to put... Lieutenant Kissinger with Sub Zero on wing. Can I spare one more? Can I make one more element? I think so. We'll put Lieutenant Kinner with Van Hare up. Okay, I will make finish making notes of that. I think that's all of my Wildcats, though. So, so if we get another air mission, we're probably going to end up taking that one on the chin. So, once more, I will shut the camera off, and then we'll get ready for land for for takeoffs. I was and I actually I also had to decide what range I wanted to try to intercept from. I was thinking about doing a short range, a close range interception, but I'm actually going to go for a long range interception. Yes, it's going to cost me more fuel. It's actually going to cost me twice the fuel that close range, that the close range interception would have cost when we were working over the, when we were dealing with the dogfight earlier. But since I have more, since I figure the reports are probably more accurate this time, I also want more time to try to work the bombers over. But we need to make sure we get off the ground first. I've got takeoffs all ready for that. So let's see if Fong is able to get off the ground. Unfortunately, it's a straight roll because we still got the we still got the minus two modifier. So this is just a straight roll. Unfortunately, Fong's roll is a three minus one is or actually it's a four. So he's going to crash. Aircraft is damaged. That's a four we established. And we've got a roll for, we want, to, we want to see at least, we don't want to see a one here. We can deal with almost anything else. That's a five. That'll be no injury. That's, that's fortunate. Then Inferno. That's a four, which is going to be another crash, which is going to be the same thing that Fong just had. Crash, aircraft is damaged, and we need to roll for him. A four is also no injury. Kissinger. Jeez. Another four. This should be this should be a decent day to get craft up. Oop, we gotta we only roll one die. So two is a Light wound for Kissinger. He'll be out for six days. Delightful. Let's see. Kissinger is taking a light wound. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now over to Sub Zero. Nine, he's off the ground. 
our first good takeoff of this second mission. Kinner up next. So we need a at least one element of Wildcats. Seven Kinners also off the ground. And for Van Hare. Five, he's going to crash out as well. Fortunately, he takes his plane takes no damage. But we need to see what kind of wound he has. Hopefully a light wound. Or hopefully no injury. He will take no injury. So now we've got an we've got one element of F4F Wildcats. I'm wondering if breaking off once we sight is probably going to be a good plan. Just because I'm basically ask I'm basically asking for both of them to get domed at this point. But before we get to that, we need to sight the final Japanese force. Let's see if the report is accurate. So 2d6 and we've got a plus 4. That's a 7 plus 2 is 11, so of course it's not accurate. Which means our final, which means our final JP, final Japanese force, is going to be a reroll on the air mission chart. 4 is going to be 9, so 9 B5N Kates. And six A six M two N roofs. So I think we're facing Okay, looks like we've got C okay, so I'm gonna get the elements ready here for that. I may be very tempted to break off here, but break this mission off early. Just because I'm sending two planes against fifteen. That does not seem like good odds to me, but what do I know? Uh, what did we say? 9B5N Kates. So, and... Six seaplanes. Delightful. So, three, six... Oh, that's an ace. Hold on. Okay, let me finish getting the rest of these elements together. I'm thinking I'm probably going to be breaking these down into smaller baggies, and I need one more element of these guys. Um, just so I don't have this organization problem. There we go. Okay. That's everything there. Are we able to, are we able to break off? I would imagine we would be, but... Um, after which they're required to break off. Hmm. Um... Okay. Right. All right, so we're working on the... So we do get the long-range interception. We're going to be targeting the... Oh, boy. This could be a problem. I feel like if I don't break off here, we're going to be asking Henderson Field to take it on the chin again. Before proceeding, you may choose to have one or more of your elements break off. Okay, um... If we've got two Wildcats going up against 15, I think the better plan here... I feel like we're asking for it with, with one die against five. I feel like we're asking for trouble here. So even though we're up... So dogfights. So it would be dogfights first. Um, I'm deciding if I want to break off here or if I want to go through at least one box. 
Because I feel like going through one box is just asking for trouble. Especially when we're up against five, and... <sighs> this is... This is a this is a bad situation to call a spade a spade. So we're in the air box. Yeah, I think. I think we honestly just break off here because I feel like we're asking for trouble. So yes, we're probably getting we're probably just getting Henderson Field domed here, but I don't think we have a choice in the matter. So I think they're just gonna break off. Which means we go straight to the bombing run. Which means the bomber elements will get to attack, and the... So I'll roll the bombing run first. Oops. Reaching my arm across the shot. Alright, so bombing and strafing. So I'll roll for strafing first. For this... Is it... I, I think bombing and strafing actually happen simultaneously. Let me just look here. Um, looks like, oh, looks like it's bombing first, then strafing. So our bombers are the Kates, and they want at least a four. So they want a four and up to hit. So we'll roll for the three elements of bombers. Oop, get down there. All right, so we only, so we only take one hit on that. So one, three, five. Which will be one hit for two VP for the Japanese. And then we have to roll for the hit. More runway damage. Great. So now we're up to, so there's another one on takeoffs and landings. All right, then for strafing, the A6M roofs need a need a four and up once again to hit. So they only have two elements of roofs. Fortunately, no hits there. So that's bringing the Japanese now up to six VP on the day. All right, then that's it because we broke off early. I did not, like I said, I didn't feel like sending... Two planes against 15. That seemed like a recipe for disaster. So now we're going to roll for landings. I'll make notes here. So who got up? I believe it was just... Well, the element was actually Sub-Zero and Kinner. I didn't really mention that. Unfortunately, now we're at a net... We're at a net minus one modifier now because we've taken two runway hits. So actually what we can do is we can make this a little bit easier on ourselves. Um, yeah, we can make this a little bit easier on ourselves. I'm going to go get some more dice out of the closet. Opening the closet door. Grabbing a dice tray out. Closing the door. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add two more dice to the roll. Let's grab a yellow and a clear. So I'm going to roll, so we're going to roll the normal landing dice. Then I'm going to roll clear for the wound, assuming we get wounded, and a yellow for the duration of the light wound, assuming we take a light wound. Let me just make a note of that. So I'm going to decide yellow is for injury to pilot. Clear duration of light wound. So we're at a net minus one. We want the blue dice. The blue dice now need to be eight or above because we're, we got the net minus one landing modifier. 
6 minus 1 is 5. That is not. So 5 is a... There's another crash. No damage. And we said the yellow was injury to pilot. No injury. Now for Kinner. Ten minus one's nine, he'll get on the ground. So we don't didn't need the we didn't need the other dice in there. Alright, so that's the landing. End of mission assessment. I don't want to see another mission here. So hopefully we roll something high on this die. That's a three, so no additional mission. Thank, thank the good gods above. We did not need to take more punishment. So now we're into post-flight detail and I'll actually start to get a little bit of this cleaned up. We'll bring the dice tower mostly front and center for these rolls. So disease and infections, we want this to be low. That's a six, so no, no infections to worry about. We don't need to be taking more damage. Pistol P artillery. We want this to be low as well. Four no hits, thankfully. And Washing Machine Charlie, the bombing run. Also no hits, but they did bomb. Night Infiltration. Can we please not get another round of Night Infiltration? That would be great game. Thank, thank God, because we had, that was how we got the runway cratered, almost cratered, the first day. Now for naval bombardment, this needs to be a six. So, high roll please. That's a five, which means unfortunately we have one hit. Hopefully it's an insignificant hit. That's a welcome. So insignificant damage. All right, now we need to check for end of day details. I believe we roll for, do we roll for MIA status first or the random event? Let's, I think we roll for the random event first. So we're rolling for, all right, so we're looking at, oh, we forgot to roll for a pilot injury for reptile. Let's do that real quick. Oh no, actually that will be pilot status on land plus one mod. Okay, so I don't think we worry about, I think we do, we would have rolled for that at the time. So a two is an insignificant injury. He would be able to walk it off. Um... Where? Oh, he got hit earlier in the mission. So, right. Ah, here we go. Um, right. Insignificant. Injury. Okay, where were we? Oh, yes, we were about to roll for the random event. On a one to two, on a one to two, we get a random event. Three to six says no. That's a one, so we do have a random event. And now I've got the logbook and shot, so I'm making my notes. Now we need 2d6 to find. A seven gives us a pilot back. Return one random pilot who was KIA. I don't think we've had any... I don't think we've had any pilots who have been KIA. Oh, no, we have, actually. Looks like we get... 
We've had some serious wounds, but we actually get Freeze back, who apparently wasn't as busted up, who apparently wasn't nearly as dead as we thought. Which is very helpful, so we actually get him back, and that's another reason why I don't like these charts. I'm going to probably, that's another reason why I don't like these charts. I'm going to try to rig, I might try to rig something up as an Excel spreadsheet, so it's a little bit easier to track some of this stuff, but I'll have to play around with that a little bit later. But we also need to find out if Reptile comes back to, if Reptile's recovered. Fortunately, we have no modifier here. And I would like to see a high roll on this. It's a 1d6 roll. That's a 4, so fortunately we get Reptile back. Rescued, and he returns to duty. That is very fortunate for us. And that's another day of Mag 23 Guadalcanal in the books. So all in all, we ended up with picking up 9 VP to 6 for the Japanese. So we have another win for the day, which means we're up to 2 already. So we have another win for the day, which means we're up to 2 on the week so far. We're putting the pressure on the Japanese at this point very early on, but... That will do it for this playthrough of Mag 23 Guadalcanal. I'm expecting, I'm hoping to do a playthrough of Call to Adventure Epic Origins later. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to be revisiting the Marvel Comics universe as we play Marvel Champions. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.